thumbs up. Okay, there's no thumbs up. So we'll keep working on that. Good morning to everybody. Today is the blessing of the backpacks, briefcases, teachers, students, administrators, anyone else who's involved in education of any form. We'd love to bless you today. I know that Mary's worked hard to have a little gift from the parish out there in the hallway. I believe, Mary, they can pick those up afterwards. Um, and so there's a little gift for you to remember uh, uh, and take with you uh, after the service. Uh, vestry is to tomorrow night at 5 p.m. I want to welcome Ferdinand uh, with us today. It's good to see you. Um, good to see you this morning. And I will mention this in my sermon, but a special thank to my friend Ann Boyd uh, for the time that I was away, uh, that we were on sabbatical. And uh, just a special thanks to Ann out loud in front of everybody. Uh, she's just a wonderful person. We're especially thankful to her. So remember now that you're also in a, a, a safe space, not only because this is a church, but also because these machines clean the air seven to nine times an hour, and masks are optional at this point. Uh, when we receive communion, just come up as you have been doing already uh, during this time uh, at the front, and we are still using the little true vines. We'll probably move out of that with some thought and prayer in the future, but for now we're still using those. So take just a moment to prepare for worship. Uh, uh, just take a moment to prepare for worship, and then we'll get started with our first hymn, which is Earth and All Stars.
The first lesson is taken from the book of prophet Jeremiah, chapter 4, beginning at verse 2. At that time it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert toward my poor people not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them. For my people are foolish. They do not know me. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked in on the earth, and lo, it was waste and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and lo, they were cracking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. Because of this earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black, for I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
song appointed for the day is a portion of Psalm 14. We will read responsibly by half verse. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good. Have they no knowledge, all these evildoers? See how they tremble with fear. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. And The second lesson this morning is taken from Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, Invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son, the Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Please be seated. So good morning, everybody. It is wonderful to see all your faces here. It's so exciting to be back. It's good to be with you. And I want to begin with thanking again my friend Mother Boyd for stepping up to the plate, lead worship, and share her life with us. I so appreciate it. And I want to thank Sarah and Adam and all the vestry for keeping the line of leadership in my absence. And thank you to Kylie and all the staff for their diligence and faithfulness. And lastly, thank you to all of you for your wonderful ministries that bore fruit to our Sabbath time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it is Sabbath that I want to talk about today. On the blessing of the backpacks and briefcases Sunday. I think it's a message to talk about Sabbath to the young and to the old, to everyone. Because Sabbath, as we hear of it first in the Ten Commandments, as in to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, you remember that one, is in fact a call to set aside a day of worship and rest. It used to be Saturday, it is still for our Jewish brothers and sisters, we use Sunday. But Sabbath as a concept is not just about a day. It's so much more than that. As I planned for the sabbatical and worked with the bishop, I had three R's. And they weren't reading, writing, or arithmetic. But they were rest, renewal, and refreshment. And I chose those because those three words kind of sum up what Sabbath is means. And first, for me, there was rest. Years ago, I think I've told you the story before, but it's been a while, our German son, Matthias, he was an exchange student, and he's like a son to us, uh, who lived with us, oh, he was age 17, uh, so he was a junior in high school. He'd been with us a few weeks, and had good English, but he had that, you know, had a German brogue behind it, and so I'll, I'll try to imitate him a little bit. Um, he, he came to me one day, and he said, roll he said, I have a question for you. And I said, yes, Matthias. He said, you know, I have been reflecting on America. And I have a question about Americans. And I said, well, this is, this is a good question to ask, to ask about Americans since you're you know, an exchange student. He said, do Americans not know about holiday? And I said, no, we really don't. Said, we really don't. You see, he saw what statistics show us. That as Americans, we work more hours, have less time off, and less holiday than any other industrialized country in the world. It, however, has not made us more efficient, 
or better workers. The reverse is actually the truth. All scientific research shows adequate sleep and time away is critical to clear thinking and to good health. And it makes better workers. It's better for bosses, it's better for companies, it's better for the country. And not that work is bad, work is a good thing. It is good. But overwork is very dangerous. And it seems, surprise, surprise, that God knew this. As, he remind, as God reminded the Hebrew people and picked Sabbath as one of the big ten. Think of the ten that he chose. He could have chosen all sorts of topics. And one of them that God stressed was remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God was saying, remember to find Sabbath. Eventually that would work out to seven years where they would leave the fields fallow. They would forgive all loans and so on and so forth. Wealthy people work really hard in, in, in Israel, as we sometimes see today, not to let that happen. They all sorts of rules to circumvent it. But God kept saying, find that Sabbath. As a church, as Holy Trinity, and as an Episcopal church, we set a, a wonderful example by providing sabbatical time. Days off in the week for me and for other folks. And so we set an example to others of what healthy work and rest can look like. And I want to say to us, I want to say to you, thank you. You heard God's call and you act on it. And you set an example, even though the world might be looking and going, are you nuts? And then, besides rest, there was also renewal. Today's gospel reminds us that there must be a balance in life. While the religious leaders were hung up on the day for Sabbath and the, and, and the renewal it might call, Jesus' point was that when renewal is needed, regardless of the day, we must rise to that occasion regardless of what's going on. For the greater way of love of neighbors always takes precedent. I do worry that in our society, and I have for some time, that folks resent folks taking time for renewal. I've heard folks outside our parish say things like, must be nice. Wish I were rich. That's not normal. And on some level, they're kind of right because bosses aren't always real good about providing Sabbath for people. And it's become a norm, which is rather sad. Because we don't honor Sabbath as a society. So non-Sabbath Sabbath thinking is a norm. And that's very sad, I think. They even sometimes question folks who seek therapy to find greater wholeness because therapy is part of a Sabbath concept too. Getting ourselves right and square in the right places. Or we have an expectation, bosses sometimes, that folks will work even when they're sick or hurting or with a family crisis. Well, you can come on in. We, you know, we'll be nice to you. Now, I know we here at Trinity honor these things, but as a church, we must continue to set an example of what it looks like to be healthy and how important renewal, physical, mental, and spiritual really, really are. When I was a high school principal, I went to Chapel Hill to, to consider working on the doctorate. Unfortunately, they only had an on-campus uh, program. But I spoke, talked to the guy about uh, the head of the department for a doctoral uh, thesis for education. I talked to him about doing a doctoral thesis or focusing on the spiritual and its impact on education. And he was excited to move with that because we don't really rest there very well. But we are good at that here at Holy Trinity and it's one of the many reasons I find pride in our parish family. And of course, the last R was refreshment. Now, many of you followed me on my journey. It wasn't always restful. But from Credo, which started in Memphis, Tennessee, the first time that we had had a, an in-person Credo in two years. Credo is the time for clergy and, uh, to go away and really spend some time thinking about the future, where we are right now, and money, and all sorts of things. And then I went to General Convention, which was also a lot of work, but a lot of fun, in Baltimore, Maryland. 
And many, some of you commented on my pictures from Scotland and Ireland. I had a pilgrimage, and I'm wearing a, a Celtic cross underneath here that I got from the Iona community, which Wally and Natalie and some of you are very familiar with. It was absolutely amazing. I'll tell you about it. Very thin spaces. But the sabbatical was for all of us to remind us in my absence how important we are to one another. To refresh our vision for God's kingdom here in this place. To allow us all to rest and renew and refresh as we head into the fall because it only gets busier now. And all of this was post-COVID lockdown. My sabbatical was supposed to have been two years ago, but we couldn't do it with COVID. So we're looking forward. We're moving forward. We all needed it. And so that call is to take this time as a microcosm of what each week should be for us as we move forward. That for ourselves, for each other, in our parish, we must find Sabbath time. Honor that when folks step out to rest, encourage each other's renewal, and honor, honor their refreshment, whatever that may look like. Remember it, that the three R's, are for each of us maybe different from you than they are for somebody else. And then out there in the world, now as I think about our two new, brand new educators out there, Kaylin and Cameron, to think as we move out into the, into the world on boards and in conversations and with bosses who are friends of ours to advocate for the three R's for others, for regular Sabbath. I'm not saying necessarily four months. I mean, professors get a year or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about time that's set aside and not to make people feel guilty for doing the things that make them better workers. It's godly. It's necessary. And it makes a better worker. I guess, as usual, God was on to something. And I think it's also critical to our survival to recognize the need to practice self-care. I'm concerned that the anxiety, the tension of overwork, the depths of depression and even suicides are but a symptom of ignoring the spirit of God's call to honor the Sabbath. But we understand that here at Holy Trinity. And I'm excited to be back because we have a vision for the future. We're going to keep painting it. We're going to listen to one another, see where we're headed. And I look forward to our working together and our Sabbath times too. Amen. Now, let's see where we are. Ah. So let's stand and reaffirm our faith, this faith of Sabbaths, in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
held in unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Lifting up Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Shannon, our bishop, Rob, our rector, and the farm ministry. We pray for the Church of Bangladesh and for the Calvary Church in Underhill and the Reverend Bob Stillman. God of grace, hear our prayer. Remembering Joseph, our president, and Justin, the Canadian prime minister, your world is shattered with, and the nation's rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we know peace in our world, peace in our homes, peace in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. With prayers for those in special need, we remember our little Rose Bridget, Jason, Kathy, Sandy, Disa, Brad, Chris, Pat, Jane, Eleanor, Sarah, and Christopher. Also residents of nursing homes and community care homes, especially Laura, Sylvia, Dorothy, and Mark. For the sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Betty, Marion, Dolly, Mary Ann, Janice, Michael, Brian, Michelle, Diane, Steve, Paul, Mark, Carol, Julie, Jeff, Dorothy, Mary, Roger, Kathleen, Lori, Glenn, Diane, Mary, Tim, Shirley, Genevieve, Cheyenne, Dawn, Ted, John, Reed, Bob, Susie, Lisa, John, Elizabeth, Theo, Danny, Jay, Tobias, Alan, Brian, Suzanne, and Don. And for those who now know we name in our hearts, and special prayers for all those affected by COVID-19. Your children wander homeless and hungry, cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in any need, God of grace. Remember those celebrating a birthday, especially Father Rob Spanhauer, Chance Benedict, Alan Monahan, and Carter Bernard. We remember those celebrating an anniversary. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. God of grace, hear We remember all those who have departed, especially Queen Elizabeth II, Arthur Noak Sr., Donald Taylor, Alan Rayboyne, and we remember that with care and compassion the millions worldwide who have died during the pandemic. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace. Amen. The ominous occasion of this day, as well as the celebration, and that is the 9 11 uh, events. We remember all those who have died and those con who continue to suffer. We lift that into your presence, gracious Creator. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Kneeling as you're able, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Mighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Now, respecting that people have different perspectives about uh, greeting one another closely, uh, you know, try not to cross the aisles. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Happy peace now. God's peace. God's peace. Now, if you happen to bring a pack or a purse or, or whatever and didn't bring it up to the front, you're welcome to do that now. But if you didn't bring it, it's okay. Because we're going to bless it anyway, wherever it's sitting. Uh, it doesn't have to be here for it to be blessed. And so it'll be blessed wherever it's located. Uh, we've got a couple up here that we're going to bless uh, kind of as an example. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. There you go. Good, good, good. Stella and Drew, they are most grown people, like grown adults, I know, stop paying attention to us, put it to us. thank you guys very much. Anybody else? Any teachers got a purse or something they want to bring up? No? Okay. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. It's so exciting, the new school year. Uh, it's so exciting to have teachers retired and uh, teachers that are working now, uh, they continue to be employed uh, and minister, and uh, new teachers, Cameron and Kaylin. Do we have any other new teachers here? I don't want to miss anybody. I'm just particularly proud of them, uh, having been a former educator myself. And then all the students that are here, and all of us who bear them in our hearts as they are educated, and grow and learn and the knowledge and love of our world, and, and I, I think since they're connected with church and the love of our God. God of all wisdom and knowledge, pour out your blessing on the schools represented here today, that they may be lively centers for sound learning and new discovery, and grant that those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to use this little one here instead of the baptismal font. This lavabo. Just pour some water in there because you know I'm going to throw water on it. Yes, I am. It won't be like the Wizard of Oz. You won't melt. Now sanctify this water, we pray to you, by the power of your Holy Spirit as a reminder of our baptism. That as this water is sprinkled on these students and teachers and others and on their backpacks, wherever they may be, may they be strengthened in memory, reason, and skill, and grant that the keychains and tokens that are outside, carried in their backpacks or used, may remind them of your love and presence throughout the day as they learn and teach. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask each to come up here, and I'm going to say a blessing and anoint you with oil, if that's cool. So, as you're able, come on up, because I'm going to bless you individually. You know I do this every year, so don't be surprised. I do it every time. Come on, Mary Hartman. Be right on the front. Mary Hartman. Mary Hartman. <laughs> She's going to call the rub, I declare. Good, good. Look at these people. I'm so excited. God of all wisdom and knowledge, bless and guide her in her teaching. Amen. God of all knowledge, bless and guide him, God, in all of his teaching and learning. God of all wisdom, guide uh, and bless him in his learning. Amen. I'm so excited. God of all wisdom and knowledge, bless and guide her in her teaching and learning. God of all wisdom and knowledge, bless and guide her in her learning. God of all wisdom, guide and bless her in his learning. 
God of all wisdom and knowledge, bless and guide him in his learning and teaching. God of all wisdom, guide and bless him in his life. God of all wisdom, guide and bless him in his life. Mama, God of all wisdom, guide and bless her in her learning and teaching. I just love this service, don't you? Oh, gosh. It's just fantastic. Please stand. May Jesus, who calls us each by name to follow him, give you the courage and confidence to be his disciples wherever you may be, at school, at work, and at home. May the gifts God has given you be a source of blessing for you and for others. Amen. Out of all wisdom, bless these book packs and all the book packs and briefcases and other implements used and the contents that they'll include in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And you know it doesn't hurt for us to be blessing everybody. Pray, Father, for your gracious creator, for your blessing on all those gathered here today. Because you know we're all teachers in one way or another. As parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, we're all teachers. We are. And we're all learning. That's one of the reasons over the teachers always say bless them in their learning and their teaching. Because I always told teachers, if you stop learning, go ahead and retire. Because you need to go ahead and get out. you to keep, got to keep learning. got to keep learning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's marvelous. Just marvelous. New school years are always fraught with tension and excitement. Aren't they? Gracious God, as the summer begins to fade, new possibilities lie on the horizon. Bless all of those who are beginning or returning to their roles as teachers and catechists, as well as those who lead and support them in their efforts. And that would be all the rest of us. May this school year be a time of grace and potential as they teach, share, and challenge others to grow in faith, knowledge, and wisdom. Bless children and youth, along with their parents. I would add grandparents, aunts and uncles, friends, as they begin a new school year. May their minds be open to learning and to the wonder of discovery and insight. Be with all as we embark on this new year. Amen. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. You may be seated.
and the author of our salvation. By Him, and with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Remember, in the Episcopal Church, everybody is welcome to come forward. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Of Christ, the cup of salvation. Now, before you receive, there are a couple of prayers you might want to learn, you might not. But we've been using them during COVID. I'll probably drop them out soon because they're not part of the liturgy. But just as a reminder that before you receive communion, it's good to have a prayer that you like, and then right afterwards a prayer that you'd like too. Let's say together. Be present, be present, O oh Jesus, our great high priest as you were present with your disciples, and be known to us in the breaking of bread, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
vaccination, which is for the new variant. Let us pray. The Lord Jesus, who in a wonderful sacrament has left unto us the memorial of your passion, grant us, we beseech you, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of your redemption, who live us and reign us with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Yes, I did write that in there to pray it on your own, but I thought we reminded you. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand.
everything you think, do, and say. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And come over to Fellowship Hour. Don't forget to stop by the a little table in the hallway and pick up a wonderful gift. There are names on everyone, and we have a plethora of names. Thank you. Thank you.